Hello, I'm Professor Toybox. I've got Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey with me, and we'd like to welcome you back to our Fantasia Toy Box for another episode of Toy Box Tutorials. Today we're going to talk about four basic creativa toys that you can interact with, and we're going to use them to set up a fun little door puzzle in Merlin's Castle over here. I think this is a good way to feature them all together so we can compare and contrast them and see when you might pick one toy over another. So let's get started. We'll come on in here and I'll show you a couple little changes that I made since last time to the castle. I added this little section over here on the top and widened this out and a staircase over here so you can get up on top of the wall. And what I'd like to do is set up a couple of doors in here. So if we come up to the gameplay toys drawer, we have these automatic double doors. And I'm going to go ahead and put these down over here, like so. And we can set up another pair over here, like that. And normally, these doors are automatic, so that when you approach them, they open up, and you walk through, and they close. And there's not really any way to lock these per se, unless you connect a creativa toy to it. And so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to come over here and throw a button down. And we've looked at the button before in a previous video. This creativa toy doesn't have any behavior on its own, but it serves to uh, capture input from the player. So you can set up a new logic connection so that when the button is pressed, we can come over to the door and you'll notice you can open the logic menu for that. And we can specify whether we want the door to open when we push the button or close it. Or there's a third option here called query, which is a little confusing. It's basically a way to ask the door if it's open or closed. The door doesn't actually do anything in response to this other than broadcast a signal that says it's opened or it's closed, but it doesn't actually open or close. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to close. And I'll do the same thing for the other door. So when it's pressed, we'll come over here to this door and close it as well. And that will essentially lock the door. And once you've connected a logic connection to the door, it will not open when you approach it because your logic connection is essentially overriding the automatic behavior of the door. So now we've essentially locked ourselves in the castle. Yeah, we could go up the wall and jump out, yeah, but then we got no way to get back into the castle unless we can fly or we have the super jump ability or some other way to get in here. So we need some way to open the castle, and for that we'll use a target. And this toy works a little differently than the button because this one responds to shooting. And I'm going to put this down here on the wall for the tower. And it's kind of hidden so that when you're outside on the ground, you can't see it. You'd actually have to climb up over these hills over here to see that button, to see that target. And we're going to set the target up with a new logic connection so when it's hit, when you shoot it, we come over to the door and we open it. And we can do that with both doors. So this is how Merlin would essentially get himself back in here once he's locked himself out. <laughs> he would have to go and shoot that target to open the doors. And so we can come out over here onto this little block out here and test this. And we'll see the door down there. So if we go ahead and shoot that target, you'll see it opened the doors. So now we can get in. And that's kind of nice. And you can use this to close it. And you can shoot the target to open it. And this kind of lets you set up a little defense type game where you can have one player inside the castle defending it and another player trying to get in. 
So we could, for example, come out here to the instant toys drawer and put in this boulder catapult as kind of a way to defend the castle. And then when we come over here, we can use this catapult and try to <laughs> attack a player who might be trying to climb up those rocks to shoot that target. So you can be defending it, another player can be trying to get into the, the castle and defend it. Um, right now, we would have to come over here, because the only way to open those doors is with that target. We'd have to actually come out over here and shoot this target to get the door open so we can leave, and that's kind of convoluted. So it might be nice to have a better way to open the door if you're the player inside the castle. So we can put another creativitoy down, and I could push a, put another button down here, but then we've got two buttons, one that opens the door and one that closes it, and that could be a little confusing. Uh, we could put down a trigger, though, and put the trigger here in front of the door, and this acts like a pressure plate, so when you walk over this, we can set up a new logic connection when you step on or off this. So if you step on it, and you can have any actor do this, so it could be a player, it could be a townsperson or an enemy, one specific team, so that it can only respond to one particular team, or a physics ball or a vehicle, so it's very flexible. Unlike the button and the target, which are only interacted with the players, so I'm going to set this up so that any player stepping on this will cause the door to open. So now if we come over here and we push the button to close the doors, now we can step on this pressure plate here to open that door, and it just opens that one door. Then we could do another uh, for the other side as well. And we could set this up so that uh, maybe it only responds when player one steps on the door. And that would open that door. But as you can see, now we've got two different toys that are opening this door. And it might be nice, instead of having just a single pressure plate uh, opening each door, because right now you'd have to come over here to the button and close it. So one button closes both doors, but then you got to step on both plates to open both doors. And it might be nice to have one control that opens and closes both doors. And again, I don't want to put down a second button because I have to remember which is which. But we could come over here and delete that button and instead put down a power switch and the power switch is set up where if you step on the red side it turns it on if you step on the yellow side it turns it off so this creative toy is essentially a toggle so we can set this up so that when you turn this on by stepping on the red side we go ahead and close the doors and again you step on it and it closes this door And if you turn this off by stepping on the yellow side, this would open the doors. The logic connection when turning it off, open. So now we have one control that can lock or unlock both doors. So now we'll go ahead and Turn it on, locks the doors, turning it off, opens both doors. And if we turn it on, we can only open one door if we want, or we can open both. So now you have a little bit of flexibility. So that gives you some additional options. And you have one control handling both. 
So now you don't really need those pressure plates. We have just one control handling both doors. So I hope you've enjoyed this overview of some of the basic input toys that are available to you, and I hope this gives you some ideas of how to use them in your own toy boxes. I think we've got the makings of a fun little castle defense game here, and this will be a lot of fun with two players in the toy box. One basic interactive toy that I didn't cover in this video is the trigger area, but I'll talk about that toy in another video soon. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, and be sure to subscribe to my channel or sign up on my blog so you don't miss the next episode in this series or any of my other Disney Infinity projects. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.